Hi guys, welcome to the se uh, second section of this masterclass about video conflict first. Uh, my name is Vero and I'm going to be your teacher during today again. Um, we are going to continue with the contents today, right? We go. Let's start. If you remember in the previous session, we uh, check uh, the selective didactic exam, passive sentences, conditional sentences, and we played pasa palabra, yes? So, um, remember that the passive, it's about formal style and uh, is used with V and past participle. The V it's in the, uh, the, the tense that it's in the active, the verb, right? Washed, past simple, where past simple of B. Mm. The next one, conditionals. Remember that we have four types of conditionals, zero type, type one, type uh, zero, type zero, if, present simple, present simple, heat, boils, type one, if, present simple and future simple or more commonly known, will, don't lose, present simple, will win, future simple, will. Uh, okay, remember that here we have a mistake, it's past perfect, past perfect. Uh, the type two, we have if, past simple, one, good, plus infinitive, good, why. And the second one, type three, in this case, if, past perfect, good, half, past perfect, present perfect, in this case. If you had texted, past perfect, I would haven't forgotten. Remember that we have half, in this case we have half, the verb half, cause of the boot, we need a infinity. Yes, um, today we are going to see the solutions for the selectivity of exam that we uh, see the last session. Uh, next part will be uh, report speech, uh, an important part for do the, the writing. Relative pronouns, it's an all important part of grammar in English. Formal style, that's it's uh, put important writings. And of course, we finish the class with the game. Okay, we start. Remember that in selectividad exam, we have text, two text, uh, and you have to choose one, the best option for you, two options, option, option A, option B. Remember that we have six questions that we have to answer to complete the, te the, te the test, the, the exam. Uh, the questions are about the text, true or false, the best one to summarize the, the text, vocabulary that you have to find in the text, grammar, and of course, writing. Solutions for this test. And the first one, the first one, send a question. Um, we have to answer this question according with the test, but with our own words. Um, the question, why did GRR talking decide to write the Lord of the Rings? Why? If we go to the text, the text says, it wasn't until Christopher Credit with his father's bad memory about details of the story that his father took a pen to paper and began recording the world of saga of the Lord of the Rings 
that we know today. So this part we have to say with all the words, with our own words. And my question, my science question is, because his memory was bad and could not remember the details about stories. And his son, Christopher, really quit him. Yes, I just clear this part. Okay, next one. True or false? The first one, two, one. You are talking used to read stories from famous books to his children. The text says, the stories weren't read from a book. They came from G.R.R. Tolkien's imagination and only his children were able to enter into the world of Middle Earth. So, this sentence is false. False, and we can, uh, we can find the answer in line 5. to five. The stories one read from the book Middle Earth. So you have to uh, you have to write in the exam, but the stories or the stories only two first sent first the, the two two words and the last two words Middle Earth as I wrote here, but the Middle Earth. And next one, 2.2, 2, your art token changed the color of Bilbo from door when retelling the story. The test says, oh my god, it's not this one, it's this one. This one, yes. Uh, last time you said Bilbo's front door was blue. And you said Thorin had a gold tassel on his hood, but you've just said that Bilbo's front door was green. So, token changed the color of Bilbo's front door when retelling the story. True, because last time the text says, last time, la última vez que tú contaste la historia, dijiste esto. And now, you said, this one. So it's false. It's true, sorry, it's true. Lines 11, 13. Last time was silver. If we go to the text, we have come find this one. Here. Last time was silver. Last one. Christopher read the story to look for mistakes and got some money for that. We go to the text and we discover that it's true because the text says, Talking paid his song, Christopher, Christopher two pennies for every mistake he found when reading through the manuscript. So it's true. And we can find the answer in lines 17, 18. Seventeen, eighteen. Talking paid his son. Talking paid, in this case, the manuscript. The first two words, the last two words. Yes, we continue. Uh, in this one, we have to find we have to choose the best option for the uh, for the text A, B, or C. Only one. So my answer for this one is letter B. Why? Cause uh, A says that characters help Tolkien to write the book? No. Are uh, characters? 
the year characters. And C, Tolkien's son was between four and five years old, not Tolkien, you know what I'm saying? C says, G.R.R. Tolkien was between four and five years old. No, Christopher was between four and five years old. Yeah, so the best option, V. Yes. And if we go to, oh wait, if we go to the last part for its vocabulary, and we have to find two words, two words with this definition. Story about that happens to a group of characters over a long period of time. Uh, if you go to the text, story, we cannot find a novel, but we can find Sarah. Yes. And walk with long steps, walk with long steps. Strode across. Yes. It is clear. Strode across the room. Uh, the last part, find synonyms, remember that. Worried, murmured, assistance. For one, worried, we can find the word concern. Concern, in line 10. Murmured, we can find muttered, line 14. And assistance, we can find helped, in line 16 and 17. Yes, that's clear. We continue with the next part of the day. So now we're going to the part of grammar. Uh, remember, report speech and uh, relative pronouns, relative clauses, okay? Well, report the speech, relative pronouns. Yes, we go. So, report a speech. It's a type of sentence that we express the words that someone says or our own words in other words or same words but another another tense. You know. So for example, in this case, we have to change present simple to past simple because we, we speak about past uh, time. I am exhausted, exhausted, sorry, I'm, I'm exhausted. So the past simple of am is was. He said that he was exhausted. In the case of present continuous, I'm standing. So present continuous, we go to step back, past continuous. She told me that she was a study. Past simple, loved, in this case, I loved the concert, past perfect had loved. He told me that he had loved the concert. Present perfect, again, it's easy because it's the same. Past simple, present perfect, past perfect both. Had, I have never been. She said that she had never been to Rome. Will, future, would, would help me. Must, have to, it's completely different, but both means obligation or, yeah, obligation. Can, we have the, nah, we have to go to past simple of can, could. May, might, 
could, might, should, the same. Yes? It is clear this part? Yes? Come on. A part of the tense, here we change the tense. We have to change also the expressions of time and expressions of place, okay? This one, today, that day, now, then, or could be other one, at the moment, in this moment. Yesterday, the day before, of previous day, it's another option. Days ago, days before. Last week, the week before, or the previous week, it's another one. Next year, following year. Tomorrow, the next day, or the following day. Here, there, this, that, these, those, ago, previously, or before, both cases are correct, and tonight, the night, yes, it's easy. So, for example, I'll send you the photos, you can write it, you can tell me the solution, Yes, careful in the test, in the, the, the sentence, sorry. I'll send you the photos. So, the solution is, he said that, he said that because we don't have the, the person that says this word. We said that, you said that, other than a correct. He said that he would send me the photos. Yes? Next one. You Past passive exam. Careful with this tense, okay? Remember that part, person perfect changed to past perfect. Very good. He said that again. We don't have the, the person that says these words. So we use this, he said that, again, he had passed the present perfect, the exam. The next one, Paul Atlanta, Paul said that, said, or Paul told, Paul said, Atlanta is a wonderful city. What do you think about that, about this sentence? It's easier than previous ones because we have the people, the person in this case, that says these words. Yes? In this case, we have two possibilities, two possibilities. Because Atlanta, it's a place, a permanent place. We could also say, Paul said that Atlanta was a wonderful city. We can pass years to past simple as we studied. But also we can say, Paul said that Atlanta is a wonderful city. Because Atlanta, it's a permanent place. Yeah, so both are correct. And the case of this one, Andrew, I can't swim, can't swim. Careful with this one, 
it's not a common past tense, it's not a common verb. Yes, okay. Andrew said that he, cause Andrew is boy, couldn't, can, could, swim. Author, model, verb, infinitive. The last one. Mary works in a bank. James said, oh, forget this. This one's it's a mistake. Yes, no, this is easy. I think it's the most, uh, the easiest sentence. Mary said that, sorry, Jane said that, we have Jane said that, again, Mary work, we have present simple, we go to past simple in a bank, and that's all. Yes, it's easy. So, perfect. We're going to continue to the next one. Relative clauses. What do what do you know about relative clauses? So relative clauses are a form or a style, a type of sentence that we don't repeat different words inside one sentence. For example. In this case, we have two types of uh, relative sentences, defining and non-defining. So, defining. We need that information, so essential information, to discover, to uh, know what they want to, to say us. Yes? Don't have commas, okay? Don't have commas. Relative pronouns, who, for people, which, things, where, place, when, time, whose, possession, why, reason. Don't worry, we're gonna check this part and the exercise, the sentences. That could be used instead of who or which, yes? And that who and which could be omitted when the, the, the word is the complement. If it's the subject, we cannot omit it, yes? We're going to see the example, the optician, who tested my eyes as my cousin? Who? Cause here as a person, tissue. And we need that information to discover who is my cousin. Yes? Who cares my, my eyes? Yes? Non defining. Non-defining, it's extra information. We don't need that information to discover uh, what they want to ask, what they want to tell us. Um, they use commas. Uh, careful with that because it's different from defining. In this case, we have who, which, where, when, and who, so that it's the same. 
but in this case we haven't why and we haven't but and non-defining clauses we cannot use that okay and it, it is impossible to omit it my cousin is an optician if we delete the last the next part of the sentence this part who is member of your golf club it doesn't matter because we can understand who is the cousin the work of the cousin um and this part is extra information that we can delete yes you sure you understand this part do you want to copy okay we go to the exam the exercises and this one you have to write the correct word careful with the first one vina is the capital of austria is a city famous for his story careful with that Okay, Vina, which it's a non defining because it's between commas. Which, que es la capital de Austria. Yes, this phone, blah blah blah, I bought on holiday, takes supper photos. Phone. It's a object, so we use which. We cannot use that because it's non-defining between commas. Which. Okay, next one. The place. The place. The lorry had been abandoned. Abandoned was a factory. place as its name uh, says it's a place so we use where it's a defining clause we need that information the lorry had been abandoned to discover what is the place where okay we cannot use that clause uh, we cannot uh, use that instead of where. Reason. Reason I came here early is not of any significance. Yes. You see? Okay, the reason, the reason why, of course, defining, we cannot use why with non-defining clauses. I came here early and of course, 
we cannot use commas here. We need that information to discover the reason. Melanie, careful with that. Mother is from Kyoto, speaks English in Japanese. Melanie, blah, blah, blah. Mother is from Kyoto. Yes. Who's non defining cause it's between commas, and we can also say Melanie, Melanie speaks English and Japanese, and we don't need that information. Yes. Clear. Perfect. We continue. So now we're going to continue with formal uh, style, formal and formal style. Remember that you need and uh, now the characteristics, the words that you can and words that you cannot use in formal and informal style. Um, so we need not that uh, verse style for video, for writings, uh, formal writings for school. And of course, for selectivity too. Yes, we continue. Formal, informal style. We go. So, where we use formal style? Essays, for ensayos, proposals, and report. Proposals and report, proposals son proposiciones, and report. Uh, it's like Spanish, un reporte. Review, review about a hostel, uh, a hotel, a restaurant, um, film, book, formal letter, formal letter for your boss, for your teachers, um, not for your friend, okay? And that um, writings, that it's the option that you have in B2, uh, we have to use formal style. Characteristic of, form of uh, formal style, it's personal style. In informal, in informal style, we, we use personal words and it's suggestive, it's our own opinion, yes? Complex sentences, formal style, uh, uses uh, complex sentences uh, uh, instead of short and simple sentences that for informal style uses. Technical vocabulary, important part has Sometimes uh, we need to know technical vocabulary to refer to different things. Uh, we don't use familiar words, familiar vocabulary. Uh, that means vocabulary that we use every day. And of course, polite tone. Not friendly and not rude tone. Friendly adds in informal style. Yes? So now we're gonna check different parts of formal style. Formal style versus informal style. Non-contractions. Contractions are informal. Use one, one of them, uh, or instead of you, you, it's informal. One is impersonal, you is personal. No humor, informal is humor. You can use idioms, you can use slangs. And of course, use of passive. It's so, so formal, cause uh, remember the passive 
um, pays attention on the object and not the agent. And for my style, use of the pronoun I. Yes. So now we're gonna check uh, different words that you could think that are formal but are informal and vice versa. For example, carry on, phrasal verbs, of course, are informal. Phrasal verbs are informal and we have synonyms that uh, we have to use in formal English. Carry on, continuar, informal, continue, informal. Find out, discover. So we have to use discover instead of find out. Hold up, delay. Delay, if you pay attention to the airports, uh, the screen says delay, not hold up. So the formal word is delay. Call off or cancel. Cancel, formal, call off, informal. Examinar. Examine, look at. Look at, informal. Blow up. Explode, formal. Blow up, informal. So in this one, I think it's easier, explode, it's similar to Spanish. Give up, surrender. Yes? Okay. In other words, verbs. In this case, verbs. Start, maybe you said, oh, that's formal. No, start, it's informal. Commence is a formal word. And finish, finish, it's formal. Ask, inquired. Inquired, it's formal. Book, reserve. In this case, book, it's informal. Reserve, it's formal. In this case, it's the same as the previous one. Reserve, I think it's more, it's easier. Book, it's more, more difficult. But reserve, it's easier because it's similar to Spanish. Check, verify. In this case, again, verify. I think it's easier than check. Verify, verificar, easy. Help, assist. Assist, for my work. Show, demonstrate. Demonstrate, demostrar, easy for us. Get, obtain. Get, informal, always, okay? Words that you think are formal, but it's informal. They are informal. Wrong, cheap, mud, butter, empty, chance, laid back, lucky are informal words. So we have to use incorrect, expensive, insane, superior, backhand, opportunity relaxing opportunity instead of this once. Great, equivocado, inexpensive, barato, insane, loco, superior, mejor, vacío, vacant. This is easy because in Spanish we have vacante. Opportuni opportunidad, opportunities also easy for Spanish speakers. Relax it. It's easier than laid back. And fortunate, the same, easier than uh, lucky, because it's similar to Spanish again. Yes? So we're gonna, we are gonna do a quiz about formal or informal. 
So tell me if carry on the lies, Brandon, Luca, point out, wrong, mad, laid out, back, flocky, and expensive, vacant, are formal or formal? Yes, we start. So carry on. It's informal because it's a phrasal verb, so formal style. Continue. Delay. Delay is formal. Remember the airports. Pull up. It's informal word. And the case of surrender. Surrender, remember, we have a phrasal verb that means this in formal style. So this word is formal, the informal word is give up. Look at, look at is a phrasal verb. So is informal, very good. Examine. Find out again. We have a phrasal verb, correct? Discover as a formal word. So we use discover instead of find out in formal step. Wrong. Wrong. Is formal or is informal? It's informal. Very good. The informal, the, the formal word is correct. Wrong. Informal. Incorrect. Formal. Mat. Remember. Loco. Crazy. It's informal, so insane is formal. Laid back. Remember that we have a similar word in Spanish. Relax it. Yes. This is formal, laid back, informal. Lucky. Lucky is informal, informal. So the formal word is very good, fortunate, fortunate. And expensive, and expensive. Formal or informal? What do you think about this one? Yes, it's formal. So cheap is informal. And what about backend? Remember that it's similar to Spanish, vacante. In English, we have uh, the synonym in informal style. It's a difficult word, empty. Yes, very good, perfect. We continue. To end the session, we are going to finish with uh, the word, the play the game, sorry, pasa palabra. And uh, remember that you have 50 seconds more or less to answer every question. Yes? Come on, we go. Let's start. So, first one, A. A, uh, this word starts, begins with A. It's a linking word. It means though, even though, yes, it's easy.
although very good. Aunque. So next one, B. It's a preposition used in passive to say the agent. Remember that the agent could be not important. Yes, by, by. C. Informal language, expensive. Informal language, expensive. So tell me the informal word for expensive. Yes. Cheap, cheap, barato. Next one, V. V, it's a type of relative clauses. Begins with the type of relative clauses. Remember that we have two types of relative clauses. Three, two, one. Defining, defining. Remember that we have defining and non defining. E. In formal language. Backend, backend. Remember the backend, it's similar to Spanish. Backend. Mm. Remember that it's a bit difficult, it's completely different to Spanish. Yes, three, two, one. Empty, empty, vacío, empty. If, if, number, of conditionals that we studied in session, in session one. Number of conditionals. Remember type zero, type one, type three. Four. Four conditionals, type zero, type one, type two, and type three, four. G, G, informal verb that means obtain, obtain. Yes, easy. Three, two, one. Get, get. H, linking word that uh, is written and the beginning of the sentences and it's followed by comma. Yes, you use this word every day, I think. Three, two, one. However, however, yes. 
I. I. Informal language. In informal language, wrong. Wrong is informal, so you have to tell me the formal word. It's easy. It's like Spanish, similar to Spanish. Three, two, one. Incorrect. Incorrect. We jump J, go to L, and this word contains L, contains L. In the word that you have to tell me, um, so the meaning, who, which, or why are these types of pronoun, this type of pronouns. Who, which, or why are this type of pronouns? Yes. Remember the grammar that we studied today. Three, two, one. Relative. Relative. Relative pronouns. Okay, go to M. M. That's another verb. That means obligation. Obligation similar to have to. Yes, no. Three, two, one. Must. Very good. Perfect. Next one. N. N. It's a verb, modal verb, that means necessity. Necessity. Yes, remember model verbs. Easy, three, two, one. Need, need. Oh, oh. This word contains O and um, it's the present reference that means that they in embedded speech. Contains O and means that they in invited speech. Yes, it's easy. Three, three, two, one. Today, today. P. P. It's a right hand that you have to use formal style. You must use formal style. Yeah. 
Remember that we have essays, reports, formal letters, reviews, and another one that is three, two, one, proposal, proposal. We jump J, so we go to R, R. In English, indirect style, okay? In English, indirect style. One. Two. Three. Do you know the word? Yes. Easy. It's easy. Report speech, report. S. I think it's easy, this one. Um, it's the sixth day of the week in English. Remember the days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm -mm -mm, Sunday. So this one is Saturday. Saturday. Perfect. Very good. T. T. Use this word instead of who or with in relative clauses. Yes, it's a word that you, you use commonly every day when you speak English. You'll see. Three, two, one. That. That. We jump you. Goes to a V. V. In informal style the meaning of this word is empty empty remember if we go to the e we have empty so here, yes, three, two, one, backhand, the can't, the can't, yes, the can't. And next one, why, why? Oops, why? With one, it's a relative pronoun, it's a who word that expresses reason. This word contains why. Okay? Contains why. Yes, easy, difficult. 
you can answer this type of sentences with because. Three, two, one. Why? Why? Okay. So, it's easy, it's difficult. What do you think about this game? So, we end these sessions with uh, this game. I hope you learn a lot with uh, the sessions, uh, remind the complex grammar, and I hope I, I help you with the selectivity exam. Thank you, bye-bye, see you soon.